Cadence of Hyrule is a rhythm-infused top-down adventure with some roguelite elements, but the real question is, is it more The Legend of Zelda or more Crypt of the Necrodancer? To which I answer with, yes. If you've not played the indie darling Crypt of the Necrodancer before, but are familiar with the traditional Zelda game, be prepared for moving and attacking to the beat of a bumpin' soundtrack while in combat, which is not entirely enforced, but greatly encouraged here. This requires your reflexes to be tuned into a strange middle ground between real-time action and turn-based roguelike style dungeon crawling, which might be difficult for some to grasp at first, but stick with it through the grueling first few sections of the game and you'll soon find this gameplay style to carve out a niche all to its own. If you just can't seem to get in tune with this rhythmic style of movement however, there is an option to turn this off entirely, but detracts from the core principles of the game and I wouldn't recommend it. Now that we have the basics of the Crypt of the Necrodancer stuff pretty much fully covered, now how does this all inject into a traditional 2D Zelda adventure? You must seek out and find four sacred instruments locked in four main dungeons scattered throughout the map while finding new weapons, items, spells, and abilities along the way. Many of these useful tools have a few practical uses for solving puzzles here and there, but many of these items provide very useful advantages during combat, which actually makes these tools feel more powerful than they would normally in a Zelda game where they are traditionally intended for puzzles first and combat second. The dungeons that you're seeking out are the element of the game that falls most in line with the dungeon design from Crypt of the Necrodancer, and comes across as more of just a gauntlet of enemies with a few traps sprinkled about than a full-on traditional Zelda dungeon. This is fine, however, because just like Breath of the Wild, the overworld map is essentially one giant mega dungeon all to itself that regularly outshines its own traditional dungeon designs. The way that Cadence of Hyrule combines elements from both series so seamlessly and naturally make it feel like the most 50-50 crossover game I've ever played. Just when you're leaning towards, okay, this is definitely feeling like Zelda, you encounter a completely new scenario that has you proclaiming, wait, no, this definitely feels like Crypt of the Necrodancer. As far as the concept of crossovers go, this is the shining beacon of how it should be tackled tastefully to appeal to both fan bases equally, while making something entirely new for a brand new audience in the process. Now I haven't mentioned it yet, but Cadence of Hyrule does have some roguelite elements, and once you die you get shipped back to the starting point of the map, lose some of your gear, but any major items or weapons stay unlocked permanently, and warp points stay unlocked as well. Also, the gems that you gather by searching around and killing enemies can be used for persistent upgrades that last between attempts, or for temporary powerful items. These gems drop more often if you keep your multiplier up, which is your primary encouragement to stay in rhythm during battles. Although the initial 30 or so minutes of the game was a brutal learning experience, somewhere around the halfway point I had become so powerful from certain key upgrades that dying essentially became a thing of the past for the entire last half of the game. I still had to try later on, but the hardest part of the game was definitely the early goings for me. If you're having trouble at the start, just give it some time and let it grow on you and you'll be rewarded with some really fun combat encounters and secrets to find later on. There are three playable characters that you'll find along the way that have a few differences to how they play, and also a co-op partner can jump in at any time to help you out, which works better than I ever would have expected. The overall journey is not terribly long, clocking in at roughly 3-5 to five hours on your first playthrough, and possibly a bit more if you do everything, but you are encouraged to fight it out on the leaderboards by tackling the daily challenges or by taking on some different seated map layouts. Although the adventure seemed to fly by thanks to the sheer hypnotic nature of the charming gameplay and insanely awesome soundtrack, I still loved every second of this memorable crossover experience. Cadence of Hyrule will hopefully be heralded as one of the best franchise mashups of all time, and could be the start of an amazing new Nintendo franchise from this point on. It's up to the courageous. And the wise. If you happen to enjoy my review style and like a focus on the core aspects of what makes gaming great, consider subscribing here to Boomstick Gaming, and if I've ever helped you make a purchasing decision either now or sometime in the past, consider checking out my new and updated Patreon page and YouTube member tiers that offer a range of benefits back to you and greatly help to improve my channel. 
My patrons just recently helped to fund my brand new logo and channel art that just went live today, which goes to show how this all can help. As always, this has been Alex from Boomstick Gaming, and thanks for watching.